I think a lot of people have not thought through exactly what it would mean uh, if Trump were to be reelected for the NATO alliance and not just for the NATO alliance, but for American world leadership in general. So you quoted um, you quoted him in this piece saying, I don't give a shit about NATO. Uh, and that was uh, conveyed to you by uh, uh, John Bolton, who also said that the um, that the damage Trump did in his first term was reparable, but the damage he would do in a second is irreparable. So let's talk a little bit about the threat to NATO, Trump's views on NATO, et cetera. So you know, Trump's attitude to alliances of all kinds is transactional. And his and really his attitude is not what's good for America, but what's good for me. What's good for me, Donald Trump? Um, and in that sense, he does bear some resemblance to autocratic leaders in in other parts of the world. Um, so you know, I wanted you know I'll have a good relation with Saudi Arabia because then my son-in-law can do deals with Saudi Arabia. You know, I mean, it's I mean, you know, I will do have a good relation with Erdogan because then my hotels you know, we'll get special deals in Turkey. I mean, I'm not saying that's exactly what happened. I'm just saying those are examples. That's how he would think about it. Mm -hmm. um, he wouldn't He wouldn't think, you know, over the long term, America builds alliances. The alliances help America have, you know, a kind of outs, you know, outsized role in the world. It helps American companies to operate in friendly countries. He doesn't really care about any of that, you know. Um, and I think his attitude to NATO is part of that. You know, it's, it comes from a very deep isolationism and this idea that America doesn't need any allies. We, you know, we can just do deals with whoever we need to at a, at a, at a given moment. Um, what's dangerous about NATO, what's specific about it, is that there is a there is a you know, there is a NATO treaty. Um, and famously, and which is very brief, I advise everyone to read it. It's very, very short. It's a, you know, they're very simple treaty. Um, and in the treaty, there's a, there's a famous article called Article 5. And this Article 5 just says that, you know, members of the alliance are, 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 you know, obliged to come to the aid of other members of the alliance in case one of them is attacked. And it's not specific about what they have to do. I mean, come to the aid could just mean shout very loudly. You know, I mean, it doesn't say you have to bring in, you know, your, your troops. Um, but it's the implication is that there will be collective defense. And so why didn't Germany, you know, why didn't the Soviet Union ever invade West Germany during the Cold War? It was because they knew there was this premise of collective defense. If they did that, other NATO members would, especially the United States, would come. Why don't they invade Poland now? Poland is helping Ukraine. Weapons are going through Poland to Ukraine. It's because it's presumed that if they invaded Poland, there would be an American, you know, NATO wide response. All that Trump has to do in order to eliminate that expectation is say, I won't do it. So, you know, the treaty, you know, has been ratified, you know, lots of people, you know, the Senate would back it, you know, the, I'm sure American military leaders would back it. You know, if he, if, if Trump were to announce a withdrawal from the treaty, there would be a big political fuss and so on. All that is true, but the, the, if the impact of the treaty is actually the important impact of it is psychological. You know, U.S. is a reliable partner. It would aid its allies. Once nobody thinks the U.S. will aid its allies, that could have consequences. It could have consequences, you know, for Poland, for the Baltic states, for Germany. It could also have consequences in Taiwan. So, you know, if the U.S. doesn't believe in collective defense anymore and Trump isn't going to come to anybody's aid, then they're definitely not going to come to the aid of Taiwan or South Korea or Japan. Um, you know, if you look around the world at all the countries that rely on the U.S. Um, as a kind of backup security guarantee, then all those countries would instantly be in trouble. And it is very, very dangerous and possibly very destabilizing. I mean, you know, we could get lucky and maybe, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know well, it wouldn't happen. But but the possibility is suddenly much higher that there would be a much larger scale war in Europe and possibly a war in Asia. Yeah, it's so important, this point you make about the psychological impact, because um, the treaty really is um, dependent upon psychology. It's dependent upon the assumption that we are uh, coming to the aid of our allies. And if there is any doubt about that in the mind of an adversary, it undermines the alliance from the get go. It has to be there has to be that assumption. Um, I will note that um, just recently in the uh, defense authorization bill, there was an amendment tacked onto it by Marco Rubio and a Democratic senator whose name I forget at the moment, but they, uh, sorry? 
Tim Kaine. Tim Kaine, thank you. Uh, where they said, you know, no president can withdraw from NATO without the approval of, I think, two thirds of the Congress, et cetera. So they're trying to nip that in the bud in a sense. And that's great. But as you point out, that doesn't solve the problem of the intent that if Trump is the president, there would still be doubt in the minds of adversaries. And as you also point out, and we can talk about this for for a minute, um, what does that do to allies or to people, to countries that are, you know, neutral? Don't they then think, all right, you know, the U.S. is unreliable. I guess we have to make our peace with China or Russia or Iran or another big power. That's exactly right. I mean, so, I mean, stipulate, you know, the Europeans do have a defense budget. They're paying, you know, half, I think even more of the, of the cost of the war in Ukraine. I mean, it's not as if there's, you know, there's, there, there's nothing there, but yes, I, I, I do believe that a feeling that NATO is over, that U.S. protections for Asian allies are gone would lead people in both of those regions to start to recalibrate. Okay. Maybe I better do a deal with Russia. Maybe it's better to have a relationship with China. Um, maybe, you know, I don't want to have that U.S. investment, you know, that the Chinese don't like. Maybe I should have a Chinese investment instead. Um, it would inevitably change the atmosphere and mood, even if, again, even if there wasn't a war, even if there wasn't a Chinese occupation of Taiwan or invasion of Taiwan, um, there would be a there would be a change in the feeling. You know, so we are we can't rely on the U.S. We can't assume that there are, you know, that deterrence will work. Therefore, we need plan B. Um, and I think you would see that kind of, I don't know, you know, this kind of cringe or I don't know what the right word is, you know, a kowtowing to authoritarians. You would see it all over the world. Right. Um, and uh, and it would have economic consequences. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that Trump, you know, was constantly boasting about is that, uh, you know, he will produce the best deals and which is, of course, ridiculous. But, you know, if our security guarantees are shown to be worthless, then it has economic consequences too, because those countries are going to be less uh, cordial toward economic integration with the U.S. That's absolutely true. I mean, why are we so integrated with Europe? Why is that? Why are the trade links so deep? You know, why is it e so much easier to travel there? Why are there so many connections? You know, all that is based on a very on fundamental security arrangements and alliances. And if you took those away, a lot of the business relationships would eventually go away too. I mean, none of it would happen overnight, but but there would be a sense that, you know, it's not too safe to have too close relations with the U.S. You know, it's not reliable. Maybe we need backups. Maybe we need alternatives. And I, and, I, and you, would, you would see that shift. And it would be bad for U.S. business. It would be bad for um, American influence and, 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 and really the, the, the idea of democracy around the world. You know, the idea of democracy, that it's something reliable and stable and that there are democratic allies and alliances who work together, that would be really badly damaged. And it would have a knock-on effect probably in ways we can't even think of yet. 